Welcome to the concluding part of this tutorial and in case you've not subscribed, click the subscription button below. This is a continuation of building our photo editing app which we started in the last tutorial which will end in this tutorial. Thank you and let's continue. Our text is just, you write whatever you want to write and you pick the color you want and you you are good to go. So this up. So text action, so that's that. So you enter your text, you write whatever you want to write, then telling you choose color. Choose color is a function we defined here. Let's choose color. Choose color should be down here. So this is where we, so we, that's because color chooser, which we can import from TK Inter. Yeah, it will ask for color. So let me just do that. So add text now. So I can write Phoebe Tech. If it has five business intelligence technology, I guess I've mentioned what we do at Fibitech to you. And in case you don't know, just go to www.fibitech.com and see what we do. And you can always hire our services so we can give you the best software development experience you can imagine. So that's where I wrote my first Fibitech. I can put it here. I can put it on the road here like that. You notice it is just written right above whatever I'm giving it to do. So revert back all changes. You can see it did not affect anything. Just revert back all changes. Or we could have clicked apply, which just apply the changes. You can see it reapplied the changes we have made. So the next button here is what draw over image. Draw over image is basically drawing something over the image we are doing, and this is the draw action. So basically. We are telling it color code, use this color code. So we can actually choose our own color, but the default color is this. We can choose our own color, then start drawing. That's where we start drawing. Then it will, it will, it will study your motion and keep on binding whatever you are doing. So it's drawing like that. Then it's just showing you the row and padding of the grid like that. So let me go back, come back here and start drawing over image. I can write A and I can write B like that. Don't mind my handwriting. So that's that on that. I can revert back to original and I can apply all changes. You can remember that. Then the next thing is blur and smoothing. This blur and smoothing is just a button that helps us to increase the blurriness and the smoothing of our image so where is the function for that so this is the draw the fresh side frame i've explained the refresh side frame filter action i've not explained that but blow and smoothing this is just helping us to actually blow out the image so we use a lot of functions from this from the what's it called the open cv library for us to actually have a bespoke action here this is just the row and colon of the of what it's doing and the likes like that. So you can just check out what all these are, are. And in case you are interested in actually learning how to use OpenCV, I'll be doing a convolutional neural network with OpenCV in a couple of months. You can subscribe to this channel to get notified whenever we start that service. But I need to do something on integration to statistical analysis and, and data science first. So I'll be doing that. I'll start recording videos for that next week. And you start seeing tutorials on that next week. So you can always join that tutorial to, to have access to that. So having said that, so let me just show you what it does. So average blurring, I can blur it and go, come back. Gaussian blur, I can blur it and come back. Medium blur, I can blur it and come back like that. But for you to understand all, what each of these blurriness means, you have to join that series because I don't want to start preaching to the choir here. So having said that, the next thing we need to do is adjust level. That's the brightness and the saturation. So I, I believe most of us have used probably a remote control for our TV and the likes like that. That's the, that's what we used that one for. So that's brightness and let me just look for where it is. Where's the function to do that brightness? What's the, what's the action called? adjust level so let's go to adjust level so this adjust action now this is the brightness so this is the scale 
So the resolution equals 0 0.1. So you start from 0 to 2, then the orientation is horizontal, like that, like that. How all this works is left to the Open CV library. So you can always join that series I told you about to actually see. So for you to have access to this code, I'll post, I will write the link to my GitHub repo in the comment section below for you to be able to see all the code for this series and have access to them. So I will, so that you can see all the code. Let me just bring this code down so you can see everything on your screen right away. So having said that, so let me just show you how it works. So brightness, we can increase the brightness, we can reduce the brightness. We can increase saturation, we can reduce saturation. So that's that on that. Let me run it again so I can see the next button. Okay, let me import so you can see it in action. Actually, you can see whatever you are doing because I've saved some while I was preparing for this tutorial. Then the rotate button, I don't think I need to explain the rotate. So you just rotate it to the left or to the right. I can rotate back to the right like that. So that's rotate button. Then the other thing I didn't mention to explain is the height and width of the display image, which is what I did here. So basically, you know, our we divide our canvas to be of size what 40. So we find the we find the ratio of the height and the width. Then we can resize our image to fit our our screen. Because we define our size to be 40. 40, 400 by 300. So if the height is more than 400 or the width is more than 300, it reduces the size using the ratio. So that's that. So if the height is more than 400, it's used, it uses this ratio, this ratio here. If the width is more than 300, it uses this ratio here. So you can just, you can check how it uses that ratio. So it's just ratio and fraction. So it actually defines, okay, for example, let's say our image is 500 by 500, it means what? It is ratio 1. So if we want to reduce the size, we turn stone to what? 400 by 400. But 400 is more than the width, so it will go back to the width now and change the width down to what? 300. So that's that. So that's why we did the width first before we did the height. So when the height is more than 400, let's say 500 now, it now multiplies the width by whatever we have here, which is 300. So the width is now 300. So the width now determines the height. So the new height will be what? the height times width divided by height. So since this one takes precedence, so it will now be the actual thing will be 300 by 300, so it will be 500 by 500, which is what we displayed to us. So the CV resize image will now define the new width and the new height from this calculation, and it will be able to display it for us on our canvas. So that's that on that. So the next thing we need to explain now is the flip and rotate, which I guess you can easily pick up from the code here. So the next thing we need to do now is to be able to save whatever we've done. For example, let me just write, let me crop, then write some text on it. Oh, sorry, I was just, I didn't put anything in my text. So let me pick a color, let me pick red. Okay, so I can just, Put the text there like that. So if I want to save, I'll just do this to give me the dialog box quality. Let me save it as quality to be saved on my system, and I can easily open at any time. So photo of so this the quality I just saved. If I open that up, you can see it's displaying here. Don't mind my screen. Let me just increase the size of my screen a bit. Okay, don't mind my screen, just, okay, let me flip it so that you can see, you can see like that. It's not like one part of the image is cut off. It's because of the size of my recording. That's what is affecting the image there. So back to my code now. So this is this on this. So that's basically what our graphical user interface does. And that's how you can build a photo editing app with Python. And We'll do another project next week, by God's grace, at the same time. But till then, I remain your host, Abbas Olaya. Thank you for watching this tutorial, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you, and God bless.